Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. We're going to go back in time, folks, uh, four years to September the 19th of 2019. I posted the weekly chart here of the uh, crude oil. You can see the little red dot here, the little arrow. That was September the 19th and 20th. I want you to see where we closed on that previous Friday, uh, what happened on Sunday night. Actually, it was, it was late Saturday night, uh, early Sunday morning, that the uh, Iranian drones, supposedly, hit the Saudi oil fields. And crude oil jumped $9 a barrel up to $69 and change. That's where it opened and stayed there for just about an hour. Now, I was in London doing a three-day seminar with uh, Tom Hugard, Dr. David Paul, and myself. And I was doing the trading on Sunday. And the first trade that popped into my mind was we were sitting right at the 78% level and the oil was up $9. And everybody in that room said, you got to be absolute nuts to sell crude oil with all this stuff going on. I said, well, maybe so, but I got to dance with the girl that took me to the dance. And this girl's got a pretty dress on and I'm going to take a shot. So I sold the oil at 69.10. The high was 69.25. I had put a stop in at 69.75. And it broke eight dollars a uh, uh, what is it, a barrel? Yeah, eight dollars a barrel. You can't see it on here. Twentyman's going to send me the data, but I, I just remembered that he has that access to that data. But it broke eight dollars, folks, and then went all the way back up and matched the high at sixty nine twenty five again. It had a sixteen dollar swing on Sunday, but people. You know, when you look at this, you, you don't see that. I'm going to show it to you tomorrow because Jimmy will send it to me. But that's exactly what happened. We had a young man in the room from Denmark, and he was a trader. He was doing quite well, and uh, he had done some pattern recognition stuff. But uh, he came up and told me uh, after I – when the trade was just on, he said, I think you're silly for doing this. He said, but uh, if this works, he said, I'm going to fly to Tucson and uh, learn what to do what you do. Well, he hasn't been here yet, but – He's become a pretty good student, and he has his own hedge fund now and is uh, doing very, very well. But from there, you can see the market went from 69 You know, it dropped all the way down, $20 a barrel, all the way down to uh, to 40, uh, 42 or 43 And then, of course, the rest of it doesn't make any difference. The reason why I'm telling you this, this is exactly what happened last night. They, they, they said, oh, yes, we're going to cut back supply. Well, cutting back supply means that there's going to be higher prices usually, right? Well, that doesn't mean they're going to stay up there. The high today, and I don't know if this is going to be the case or not, but the high today was 81.50 per barrel. Now, the 61% retracement on the weekly chart is 82.56 within one dollar barrel. So 82.56 is a marker that I'm watching because so, if we get there and don't get any higher than that, that tells me, yes, that number is going to be relatively strong, I think. Just like today's high in the Dow Jones Industrial Average at 38,826, the high was, uh, the that was the number, and the number was 38,828 was the exact 61% uh, retracement from the Dece December of uh, 2000 and. Uh, Night 2021 high, okay. So that tells us that my gosh, maybe, maybe this might work, but it's been off by two Dow points so far. So you can't really count that yet. That's not accuracy. Two Dow points out of 38,826. Who knows? The other one that's interesting, and I want to bring this to your attention too, because this has been the weak sister among all these things. And that is the Russell. And I want to get this up here to show you because this is one of our 
one of our favorite patterns is probably, you know, like I'm saying, these are only probabilities, folks. That's all they are. But you'll see here that uh, we had a, uh, we made a 60, excuse me, a 38% retracement, okay? Went four points higher of the high that we made way back here in February. Now, this one made a higher high way, way back there. It, it's so far away from the 3A2, the 3A2 is way up here somewhere. But that's all we've done. We've had a nice 10-day rally, stopped right at the 3A2, and then, of course, it took out Friday's low, had a big outside day to the downside, and now it's just hovering there doing nothing. But this has the potential of being a 1, 3, 5 pattern. You see the lower highs that we have here? The symmetry between high 1, high 3, and high 5. High five. Hey, that's what they usually say it in our high school there, Johnny says. Johnny's just moved to high school. He went from the fifth grade directly into high school this week, folks. He's done so well on his, his ciphering. He's done really good. Now, speaking of the 135 pattern, those of you that are involved with the stock of Apple, you, you, should, you should bow to the trading gods. Oh, dear. What's this here? Uh, now, hold on a second. We'll just get that taken care of. Hold on. It's, I, I, you know, we have neighbors here that we take care of, and whenever they call, we have to answer them. Anyway, this is Apple. You can see, folks, it's a daily chart. Uh, this is a 135 pattern. I want you to see the difference here between the highs. That's a 135. We have lower, lower highs. This is in a downtrend. Uh, we're right at uh, $65 a share. We need to close above $66 a share to violate that, and if we do... This thing could be on its way a lot higher, and all the markets are going to be going higher. And that's certainly a possibility because these markets uh, move in really quick fashion once they move. But this is a perfect 135 pattern in Apple. When it fails, it goes above 66 and a half, 66 and a quarter, and then it's off to the races to the upside. But until that happens, Apple is still in a downtrend. You can see, look at the beautiful ABCD down here. We talked about this, you know, two and a half months ago when it was sitting there, right? There, well, two months ago when it was sitting right there at the, at the bottom, you know, right there at 125. And now we're up at 160. We had a heck of a move. So those are these are these are just patterns, folks. And when they fail, they're telling you something that something is there that you're not aware of. And so the market's either going to go higher than lower than that level, because if this market this market could have easily kept going to the downside, it can easily keep going to the upside. You can make the rules for anything. I mean, just the fact that we've had a big increase in the price of oil is not going to be good for those of us that are on a on a fixed income, like on Social Security, like I am. Then you don't have to do some riding my bicycle to work. Oh, I work at home, so that makes it a little bit easier. So let's pay attention to that. I really hope, and I'm going to get on Jimmy's Jim Twentyman's case tomorrow to show you the action of that September the 19th because I remember it so vividly. Uh, the market broke from 69 down to about 60. And then we went right back to 69, kissed it goodbye, and then boom, we went from 69 all the way down to uh, 52, I believe. It dropped uh, uh, $17 a barrel over the next three or four months. So just because these news items are out here, it might only act a day or two, but that's really what you're looking at as you're watching here. We had a big, big 61% retracement in gold last night down there at that uh, six, uh, excuse me, 1963 level and uh, up 40 bucks uh, to breaking out above 200 again. So, and bonds moving stronger, all those things we think we're going higher. So we'll see. We'll be right back folks, 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio Tom O'Brien is here to help Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years a frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you Tom's daily market newsletter market insights is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the 30-year Treasury bond, and you can see here we've had this little tiny over the past two weeks, slight retracement, could barely make the 382 retracement, and now we're starting to you know, accelerate to the upside, much like we're looking at in the gold market, too. Both of those are looking very, very positive uh, from a technical standpoint for much higher prices. Uh, we're trading substantially, but at least we were a little while ago, substantially above $2,000 dollars an ounce now in the June contract. So that tells us we're probably going to keep keep moving uh, to the upside. Now, there's a couple of other charts that, uh, you know, we've talked about the uh, the, the crude oil. We've all, we talked about the stock market. We've talked about, uh, well, the soybean market is still going higher, folks. So uh, got out of that one too soon. It's a, something but my harbinger of what we have to look at. But let's get together here on something else that we've been waiting for for a very long time. And it happened here on Sunday night. And that is our natural gas. Finally, after all of this time waiting, we finally got down to our ABCD point, which was uh, you'll measure here came in at uh, 204. The low was 201.90. We're trading about 10 points above that, which is no big deal. But now you're in a in a risk free situation. You go below there, you don't want to hold it. But at least it went exactly to the price that we thought it was going to go to. And so your risk now is is very very small. If, in fact, it works, we don't know whether it's going to work, but we don't know on any of these things whether they're going to work, and nobody else does either. So that's the real difference. By the way, our guest today at the break will be none other than Steve Huge of Alpha Insights, who's done a fabulous job you know, on some of these markets. And then tomorrow we'll have Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter will be our guest. And if I have any luck at all, I'm going to have Jim Twentyman on on Wednesday so we can talk about data, harmonic numbers, and some of the things that he looks at when he's watching some of these markets. I wanted to share with you something that happened last week on Wednesday that was extremely important, an aberration that I had not seen 
in just about, well, I probably saw it, but I don't remember it. This was the uh, the chart I'm going to pull up here now is the left is going to be the E-mini S&P and the right is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You'll notice that the Dow Jones Industrial Average on the right made a 382 retracement of the previous day. But look at the S&P, folks. It wouldn't even back off anywhere to give any type of a 382 retracement. And that what that ABCD structure is what it what it got up to at that uh, 4158 level, which was a 1.618 expansion of that move. And that's why uh, the high today, well, here's another one. We were looking at it to go to uh, 4158, and it missed it by, uh, well, it went to 4157.75. It missed it by one tick. So we can't count that as a possible hit because that's off by $12.50. Okay, now let's move on here. And um, just move on here one second here, and we'll pull up another one. By the way, folks, when I'm on, if you folks are, well, never mind. It doesn't make any difference. I wanted to, to share with you across the pond. We're going to give you a free, a free ride over there, over to the U.K. And what we're going to do now, before we stop at the U.K., we are going to stop in Germany and let you see what's going on with the German DAX. And if you like ABCDs and you like Fibonacci's, there you are, folks. There's a double top with a double ABCD pattern coming in right at that double top area right here. You can see there's your ABCD here. There's your ABCD there. So it's a double top. Does that mean it can't continue going far, far to the upside? Absolutely it can. And that's when a pattern fails. And that's when you say sayonara, get on another train. Ride another boat, whatever you have to do, but you don't want to stand in front of that freight train. And it did take out that previous high from uh, March the 2nd, but uh, it sold off right after that. So all it did was go up there and look at the stops, and then it rolled over so far. But this is just one day, perhaps, uh, one day uh, doesn't really count. You got to get it down a couple days before you do anything. Now, another market that's in the news all the time and very, very important from a Fibonacci and pattern standpoint is Bitcoin. Again, I know it's blockchain, uh, you know, that type of stuff, but I don't know much other than that, other than cryptocurrency type stuff. But there was your 382 retracement or the high we made last year. You can see the 382 off of that level, the ABCD, and they, they all they talk about is the fact that it's up 70%. Tell me something, folks. If you bought that thing at 67,000 at the high and it's trading at 28,000, does it make you feel any better than the fact that it's up 70%? I don't think so. But that's what you're at. You're right at the 382 retracement. It's 28,860 or something like that. And I believe it hit 29,010. Uh, it's within $100 of the exact $100 of the exact price uh, per coin. It's not per share. It's per coin. And uh, so we'll not worry about that. Okay. Now, I want to cover one other one here that's very important. We've got to cover, several to cover here before Jeff comes on. I've covered the uh, natural gas. I wanted to talk to you uh, a little bit. I've mentioned something that I don't want to get involved in, but I've got to mention it a little bit, and that is uh, these markets that run and just keep running and running and running are really difficult to trade. Now, my teacher, my, my, my first teacher, well, my second teacher was John Hill, and uh, John used to talk to me about dynam dynamite triangles. They're also known as flags. Now, I'm not going to go into this. Because what we have, you just can't beat. You can't beat A, B, C, D. You can't beat Fibonacci. Some people trade flags and pennants. And all those are, you'll notice that markets consolidate before they explode to the upside. Now, I don't trade this way. I bring it to your attention to show you that, yes, some people do do this. But I don't. Uh, I might someday, but right, right now I'm not going to do it. I'm a pattern recognition swing trader, folks. I've been in this business for 62 years with AB equals CD, and I'm going to the wall with ABCD because it's with me all the time, and I can't tell you how many times that it's saved my bacon. You know, look at this, how long we've been waiting to buy this natural gas. 
uh, on the downside. I mean, it finally got to our level. It finally got there. Sure, that's great. Whether it, whether it stays there or not, I don't know. But at least it's got everything that I need to know. Now, when you're doing these, first of all, you can't do these flags and pennants unless you're looking intraday. And most people don't want to sit in front of the machine every day and all day long. I don't like doing that. So this is not a good strategy. That's why I don't have anything to – I don't have any interest in it because that's not, that's not what I'm about. You know, I'm uh, – <laughs> anyway, I'm, re I'm bringing this to your attention, folks, to show you that, yes, you can get into these things, but you have to be able to prepare yourself for it. Now, the fact that the soybeans were got so strong, now we're, we're looking to buy November beans, which is the new crop beans. They're trading for $2 a bushel under the uh, July, and we will get a chance to buy it here in the next two or three days. The first three-day pullback, I'll have my little eyes and ears on it, and so will my my fellow traders and we're going to be looking to buy those november beans if we get the perfect setup where we don't have to risk very much and that's what we're looking at folks we're looking for a perfect setup because at that point we know this is where we stand we know whether we're going to be there to play or not you know you don't have to go in early let's take a break we're going to be right back with jeff huge of alpha insights and stay tuned 877-927-6648 If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. Jeff, how are you doing today, my friend? I am doing well, Larry. Great to be here. Oh, it's great to have you here. Now, you're going to talk to us about the performance that has been going on in the market. Do you want to explain to the folks what you're looking at here in this beautiful rainbow-colored chart? 
Yeah, you know, it's it's not Gay Pride Week. It's just a very bifurcated market. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the reality, the reality, Larry, is this. I mean, um, you know, without technology, the market would have been more or less flat for the month of March. And uh, without the impact of financials, it would have been up a little bit more than it is. But, you know, as it is, um, the S&P closed around, you know, plus 3.7% for the month of March. But if you actually look at the equal weight index of the S&P, so every, you know, take away the super cap weighting that you give uh, companies like Apple and Microsoft and just flatten it all out so everything's worth about, you know, 20 basis points or something or a few basis points. That performance suggests that the average stock price was down 1.1% in March. It, it's actually mind-boggling to think about that. Wow. And this is only the first trading day in April, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, now <laughs> let's, let's, move on. let's move on to the next one about this uh, participation that you've been watching uh, in the market. It'll just take me a second to get this up here so the folks can take a look. I love these charts. Oh, dear, except that one. I lost it. Hold on just a second. I don't ever well, give an Italian. Say, don't ever let an Italian is... handle a mouse. I can promise you that. That's not a good thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. We've got it up here now, and you'll be able to see it. Go right ahead. The, the message here is really that the participation has been extraordinarily limited. I mean, it was companies like NVIDIA, which were up 90%, Meta Platforms up 76%, year to date that have really been driving the first quarter's performance. You know, uh, we know that the S&P 500 was up 7.5% uh, in the first quarter, but the average stock, you know, if this is a bull market, that sounds great, 7.5%, but the average stock's only up 2.4%. So it's, it's companies like Meta, NVIDIA, Tesla, even Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft, and Alphabet all had outsized uh, contributions and um, you know that's what really drove the index's returns but what's interesting is if you look at kind of the inset that shows you what the valuations look like on those companies the average weight or the weighted average pe multiple of the top seven stocks in the s p 500 is over 34 times forward earnings that's a pretty healthy uh, uh price to pay and if you look at uh sales price to sales is over eight times um that's four times higher than the market. And, wow. um, you know, if we think about it from a forward price uh, earnings ratio to growth, in other words, the peg ratio, which is a lot of way people want to justify it, you know, one times is, a, is considered normal. We're at 2.7 times on a peg ratio basis. So, you know, we're at least almost three times overvalued where these stocks should be trading based on their growth rate, which isn't all that impressive. These companies are expected to grow on average less than 12% over the next five years. And so, wow. you know, I, I think that people are really paying a price for the performance in the first quarter, and they may pay that price for the rest of the year on the downside. Okay, now let's take a look at the uh, breadth of the market. Boy, this is a really scary chart, considering the fact that we've been up for, you know, since, uh, well, what, October? I mean, this is really an amazing thing. We've been up for so many months, and yet the breath is deteriorating that badly? It is. And, in fact, you're looking at a four-year weekly chart here, and the point of this chart is if we go back to the January 22 highs and we take a look at the downdraft that we had in stocks into the lows, everything that we've seen since about May 1st has basically been a, a sideways market. And you were talking about pennants. I would call this something of a pennant. We would refer to it as a symmetrical triangle in Elliott wave parlance. And, and we would count it from the first point at the top as being the A wave. The second point at the bottom is the B wave. Then there's the C wave at the top as we move closer to the right and a D wave at the bottom. And this last little touch that we're just seeing right now is wave E. That's the five point symmetrical triangle. The next move should be the downside. And, you know, one of the concepts from technical analysis that uh, I recall from my CMT training uh, was that, you know, when you get into a lateral consolidation, typically of the triangle variety, the triangle tends to resolve in the direction of the prior trend. And as we can see, the prior trend was clearly down. And my suspicion is that given this, this narrowness of breadth, the non-confirmation that we have in breadth, 
And, you know, the breakdown in the equal weight S&P 500 versus the cap weight, I think this is going to be a textbook resolution to this thing, uh, to the downside. And our view is that it can go meaningfully lower. Well, it's uh, boy, that, that breath is really scary. I, I We had Bill Meridian on a few weeks ago, and he was saying this pretty much the same thing that you were saying. He said the breath is just historically looks absolutely horrible. Now, the next one we want to bring up to you, and then we've got a break coming up, is the the volatility says there's no fear. And I can attest to that. There is no fear out there. <laughs> Hold on uh, one second. No doubt. I, I want yeah, to get people this are, are they're running to you know the the stocks yeah. that are that are working basically and uh, yeah. you know when you start piling into these names it's it's consistent with the end and not the beginning and what we're looking at is you know historically going back to last year you can see that when the VIX got down below twenty percent it was consistent with past highs in the S and P five hundred when it got above thirty thirty four percent it was consistent with past lows this most recent pop up to around 31 percent didn't quite get to the prior high level and we got a little shallower low but uh you know the rally that we're seeing isn't even hitting the february 2nd high yet and we got all the way back down sub 20 percent to get in the vix so my suspicion is that you know this is marking an interim if not the top uh before we see the next wave to the downside okay i have a i have a question um do you use uh, algorithm, algorithms, uh, algorithmic trading at all, or how, how do you how do you enter your orders? Uh, someone's asking that question, Jeff. Yeah, I am a swing trader, and I enter them manually. So um, I do the homework. You know, usually the night before, I know exactly what I'm going to buy. I enter my orders before the open. I have limits uh, where I'm going to buy in, uh, and I have limits where I'm going to get stopped out. So. Um, you know, I know both ends of the market. I know exactly how much I'm going to lose before I ever buy a stock. And um, usually I have I'm a trend follower. So I have some sense of where I think the stock can go. But I don't sell unless it breaks trend. And so I'll let them okay. run as long as possible. How long? Of a, how long? of a What do you use for your trend? Do you just look at higher bottoms, lower tops, that type uh, that, of thing? Or do you have, uh, a you know, I have a multi multi uh, discipline time frame. So uh, okay. the, the shortest one would be a 21 day uh, moving average, and when we close below the 21 day moving average, that typically signals the first area to take take a little off the table. When we okay. break the 55 day, I'm usually out. Okay, that makes sense. Well, that's that's what makes you successful is the fact that you follow what your risk is and not how much money you're going to make. Because it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you don't lose. That's for sure. Uh, we got a no break doubt. here in about uh, in about 30 seconds. Let's give a little tiny commercial here for the next 30 seconds on how the folks can reach you. And we'll do that again at the end of the show. But you have such sure. a great letter. Tell the folks how they can reach you for that, Jeff. Oh, here yeah, it is. You know, we, Too we, late. <laughs> most of these charts are right from our, uh, our uh, newsletter, which okay. we publish at the first of the month. So you can always okay. find that on Substack. Okay. We'll be right back with Jeff Hughes, Alpha Insights, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. 
A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Back, folks, we have Jeff Hughes of Alpha Insights on the line, and he's going to talk to us about the financial stress is reaching its limits. Mine certainly is. I don't know about yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, the St. Louis Fed has created an index that they call the Financial Stress Index, and it includes a whole bunch of a whole cadre of of different relationships with interest rates and interest rate volatility and equity volatility and, and looking at different indexes of financial stocks, et cetera. So it's, it's many overlays, and, and we show that in blue in this chart, and then we overlay on top of that the VIX index. And I think what's interesting here is that, you know, we hit a level uh, on um, uh, March, 15, March 15th, I believe, or the week of March 15th, and it actually closed very near that level. That has only been hit four other times in history. That was first hit during the long-term capital management crisis in 1998, then the 9-11 yeah. attacks in 2001, then the great financial crisis in 2008, and then finally the COVID pandemic crisis in 2020. At each point where we got above that level, which is about 1.50 is normal, by the way. 1.5 is basically one and a half standard deviations above normal. Um, we got above that. The VIX typically has soared either in advance or concomitantly with that move uh, north of 40 percent, typically before it reverses on a monthly closing basis. Um, but, you know, I've just marked it here to look back. And I think we are on the precipice of something that could ignite and move substantially uh, higher in terms of financial stress. Um, I've been digging deeply into what's going on in the banking industry, and this crisis is much more um, advanced than people think it is, and there are many, many more problems uh, well beyond the Fed's capacity. You can't you can't can't take commercial real estate collateral and deposit it with the Fed and get liquidity, and that's going to be a major problem in the very uh, near term. And so, you know, my suspicion is that we are going to uh, go on to see. Uh, you know, these things get uh, a little bit out of control. Well, I have to agree. The reason why is I look at, I'm not a stock trader at all, but I look at the bank stocks to see how they react, and they're not even bouncing. I mean, you know, you get no. the stock market up three or 400 points, and the, these banking stocks still go lower. There's something wrong, you know? You can't, you can't have a bull market when the bank stocks are making new lows. Holy cow, that's just really... Amazing. That's just uh, hard to believe. Holy cow. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next one, and I will sh sh let the folks let you see what you're doing. And we've got another break. Come over. Oh, oh, my goodness. Hold on just a second here. I just got a notice on data. Losing data. What is that going to mean? Okay, let's get over here, and we'll come over here. 
bear with me. I'm 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 panicked here sure. for a second because I got the wrong button on, and I want to don't want to put up a uh, chart that we've previously seen. This is the one on Elliott wave analysis. So, yeah, we're just showing our, our cycle degree and primary degree wave count. And the cycle degree is a 13 year monthly view that goes all the way back to the 2009 lows, and it shows that we're you know advancing in this kind of parallel trend channel. But we're, we're dancing right toward the razor's edge here in the lower boundary of that channel. And it's our view that we are on the precipice of a big downward uh, uh, wave in the stocks. And if we look at uh, the primary degree count on the right-hand side, we can see that count blown up as kind of a you know uh, primary wave one decline into the June low, uh, primary wave two into the August high. And then now we're subdividing primary wave three and we've seen wave one down which bottomed in october and wave two up topped in february on february 2nd and so we're now at minor degree and it looks like we're on the precipice of a third wave decline at three degrees of trend which should carry the market all the way down into the mid 2000s by s p terms um you know before it's over wow this is really this is really good stuff. I, I I like the way you you present the Elliott wave. You know, you're not you're not consumed with one threes and fives and all that. I don't want to call it Mickey Mouse, but it's over my pay grade, so I shouldn't really say anything at all. It's better, like the guy said, it's better to keep your mouth shut and be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. So I, I don't want to it's do that. It's just now. a roadmap. It's a roadmap okay. of where we've been, and and that okay. is predictive of where we're going. And you know, yeah. when we look at it on a shorter term basis. You can kind of see that, you know, we're kind of at the end of the rope here, I think. Well, today's high in the Dow Jones Industrial Average within 10 points was the 61% retracement of the high we made in December of 2021, 14 months, yeah. 15 months ago. So to, the, to almost to the tick. Well, it missed it by 10 points, so I guess you can't call it accurate, but it's pretty close. Well, so what are you looking at the short term? shows. Yeah, it shows that we've rallied right into the top, the upper boundary of a parallel trend channel. And we were printing what looks to be kind of an evening star candle. And uh, it's right about where the 78.6% retracement of the decline from the February 2nd high into the March 13th low would be. And so that's a perfect place for, you know, minor wave two to top. And if minor wave two is just top, then we are in minor wave three down right now. And if we break below, say, around 4,000, that's pretty much where the 50-day exponential moving average and the lower boundary of that parallel trend channel converge. I think once that's broken, it will be an indication uh, that wave minor wave three down is accelerating. When we take out the December 22nd low, which was wave B of that counter trend advance off the October low, that will confirm it, and that will be kind of the point of recognition for most people out there that it is head for the hills. And so uh, that could be a Minsky moment, if you will. Uh, now, Jeff, that's a possibility of a head and shoulders pattern here? Uh, I, I don't see it, but um, it's uh, possible that, you know, once well, it's completely Well, if you don't see it, it's formed, not there. Let's put it that it way. That. <laughs> Let's not worry too much about that. I think we have uh, one more chart to go through, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or with that. No, here's a monthly newsletter. That's the most important chart yeah. of all. That's your monthly newsletter. So let's talk about that a little bit because yeah, you do a great job we, on this. Well, thanks. I know you read it. You told me so. Yes, and, I do. And we, just published, we just published the April issue on Saturday, April 1st. Yeah. Uh, we entitled it, This is No Joke, because it was April Fool's Day. We didn't want people to think we were kidding. <laughs> but um, you can find this uh, at hugeinsights.substack.com, or you can go to uh, my website, which is jwhinvestment.com, or you can also find me on Twitter, at alpha underscore insights. And the newsletter can be accessed at any of those places. We give you a pretty good preview, you know, about four or five pages of the newsletter. It's about a 20-page long newsletter. Um, if you want to read the whole thing and see our full analysis, uh, you got to upgrade to pay, but that's only ten dollars a month, and so uh, it's not. We're not uh, charging an arm and a leg for. It. We want to help as many as we can, and uh, I think it's a pretty good value. We've got almost a thousand paid subscribers right now, so oh, um, you know, I guess people like it, and uh, we put a lot well, of work should. into it. Uh, 
Takes this me was all the months best to des- write it. <laughs> Jeff, this was the best description of what the Fed is doing of any letter that I've seen. And I, I look at bits and pieces, but I read it through completely. And it is a really concise way of what the Federal Reserve is doing and what they've done in the past. Uh, if you're interested in that, uh, contact Jeff because it's uh, it, it really you give a good description of what's really happened. And many people don't well, we understand mortgage-backed securities and real estate loans and stuff like that. And you do a good job of uh, telegraphing. Listen, we're going to have you on again soon, my friend. Okay? Hey, thanks, Larry. It's uh, great for you to have me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. I look forward to talking to you soon. Have a happy Easter. You bet. You too. We love you, buddy. Keep it up. All right. We'll be Bye-bye. right back, boys and girls. 877-927-6648. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, there are two charts to pay to, uh, attention to today. The one I just posted here is the one of the uh, E-mini S&P. Showing you that this, uh, if you take a look at this, uh, this number up here was 4,158. The high was 4,157 and three quarters. So we missed that one. That Fibonacci number didn't work. And the other one was the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And we'll get that one up here to let you folks take a look at that one because this one didn't work either. Here's the Dow Jones going back to the December 2021 high 14 months ago. And the high today in the Dow Jones Industrial Average was 
38,000, no wait, not 38,000, 33,826, and the number supposed to be 38,828. It missed it by two Dow points, or basically $10. So neither one of those numbers worked. Now, if they get above those numbers, that means the market's going to go substantially higher, one would think. Wouldn't one? But who knows? We're going to do one step at a time here. These patterns are good for failures. They're good for determining what the markets can do, but they can do it within limits only, folks. They fail, uh, they fail some of the time. About 30% of the time they fail. The other part of the time you have some break even and you have a few winners along the way. But that's what we're paying attention to are these two numbers today in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. 33,820 and also the E-mini S&P at 4,158, the high being 4,157 and three quarters, which is pretty close to being where it should be. Okay, the fact is when I sent the video out last night, I said, look, you'd break even now. You move your stop down to a 31, excuse me, 41.55, and you make a couple of bucks. Hey, let's take a break. We'll see you on the next show. We'll be coming up in about seven minutes. We'll be right back.